In Court on TKOA Television is brought to you in part by Campbell Bonding Company. Even the best of us make mistakes, so when trouble finds you, trust Campbell Bonding Company to help you through what can be a confusing and sometimes frightening experience. Jim, Robert, and Cole Campbell work as a family to offer your family understanding and compassion during a very difficult time. Campbell Bonding Company can help get your family back together quickly and confidentially. And in every step of the process, they're there for you. In times of trouble, let their family help your family. Campbell Bonding Company, 870-741-1138. is going to call, uh, this is Boone County case 2017-52, uh, State of Arkansas versus Edward Hugh Wade, Jr. Your Honor, I believe Mr. Wade, Jr. is here for a reappearance. I have not been able to get in touch with him yet. I understand he's in Washington County Detention Center. Right. We will try to set up a, a Skype visit with him within the coming weeks and see what we need to do with this case. Okay. If there's no action to be taken today, Your Honor. Judge, in the meantime, I am going to give uh, Mr. Friend a copy of all the discovery that we have in this case. Plus, I did talk to Brandon Carter, the federal prosecutor. Mr. Wade has entered a plea of guilty in federal court, but it now appears that it may be as late as June or July before the sentencing is going to occur in his case. And I know that probably comes as a a shock to Mr. Wade because originally we were led to believe it would probably be April. And I believe there's a scheduling order in this case. There is. It's down for a pretrial on March 24th, uh, and it's down for a uh, plea acceptance or rejection date of April 21st with a trial that was set during the May 8th trial week. That's the scheduling order that's in effect in this case. So essentially, this, is, this appearance is, is the equivalent of kind of checking on the status of the case date uh, for reappearance. Um, in, in Mr. Wade's uh, current status, do we have any idea, of, 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 are we going to be able to uh, obtain him if he hasn't been sentenced? Is, are we going to be able to get him here and have that pretrial date? Your Honor, I'm going to try to make what arrangements I can. However, the feds are often quite reluctant until someone has been sentenced to actually release them. I, and I really don't understand that. He's being held in a state of Arkansas facility. It's not like it's a federal facility. But I will do what I can to talk to both the uh, Marshal Service and the uh, federal prosecutor handling his case. Right. And I'll do what I, I can try to stay on your scheduling order. We just got served with discovery, but I'll get with him via Skype, and we'll do our best to stay on the scheduling okay. order, Your Honor. Mr. Wade, were you able to hear all of that? All right. Well, we're, so we're, we're proceeding on our, tra our scheduling uh, order here. The information that Mr. Carter related about the the longer term it may take to to do this the the scheduling in federal court I mean the, the sentencing in federal court uh, 
leave, you know, leaves me with a, I mean, I'd like to see this matter resolved one way or another uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, so talk to Mr. To Mr. Friend, who will be getting in touch with you, and uh, let's see if we can't resolve this either later this month or, or certainly in April uh, in terms of what uh, you have to look forward to in the federal system. So. All right. You may be excused at this time. All right. Thank you. Court's calling Boone County case 2017-63, uh, State of Arkansas versus Dominic Bruns. No, excuse me. Uh, John, this is 2017-54, State of Arkansas versus uh, Kevin John Creekmore. This matter is for arraignment here today. Has he made application? Yes, right. sir, he has. Very good. You need me to send that one too? Court's making the appointment of the Public Defender's Office to represent Mr. Creekmore. Mr. Creekmore is for arraignment on charges of breaking or entering a Class D felony and criminal attempt and criminal attempt to commit uh, theft of property, a Class B misdemeanor. On those charges, how does uh, Mr. Creekmore now plead? Your Honor, we'd enter a plea of not guilty and waive formal reading of the information. His plea of not guilty will be noted on the record. The Public Defender's Office is being appointed. The case is assigned. Uh, to the Division Four docket of this court, I'm going to set it down for uh, for reappearance. On June second, uh, by scheduling order for June second of 2017, I'm going to set it down for a pretrial date of. Uh, August 4th of 2017 and um, setting it on the, the trial schedule for the week of September 5th. All right. All those, all those dates will be uh, set by scheduling order. That's what I was just looking for. It was... Hmm. Worth noting. Um, That's a good
Does, does the state have any information about what the arrest date was? I mean, this is a lengthy affidavit I'm having to read through to see if somebody placed him under arrest. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Carter is going to retrieve the rest of the files. I'm sorry, we don't have it right now in front of me. And what, a couple of weeks ago? It appears that he was not arrested back in September when this matter came under investigation. He was contacted by law enforcement, but he was, it does not appear he was arrested at that time. He, uh, this, uh, therefore, his arrest date would appear to be February 18th of 2017. He set by scheduling order as stated. Your next appearance in court will be June 2nd. Uh, you need to stay in touch with your attorney. It's your responsibility to stay in touch with the public defender's office. Don't make them track you down. There, there are so many people who are using their services that, that they don't have time to, to, to find you and get hold of you. So you stay in touch with them, make appointments, and get in to see Mr. Friend. He can't prepare your case unless you get in to see him. All right? Thank you, Judge. You may be excused at this time. Ah, sweet Louise, do you dream of Hercules? To be the best dressed boy in town, where you shot off something, the best there ever was. The new Sport Heritage Line. Well, it won't mean nothing. Only from Yamaha. Spring is here, and Quality Feed Grains has Spring High Mag Loose Mineral to prevent incidents of grass tetany in your beef cattle. They're now taking orders for baby chicks through May 31st and baby ducks through April 14th. Mark your calendar for April 8th and join them for Customer Appreciation Day from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. Quality Feed Grains with two locations, 4617 Highway 65 South and 311 East Prospect in Harrison. Boone County Case CR 2017-63, State of Arkansas versus Dominic Bruns. Mr. Bruns. <laughs> All right. Mr. Bruns, can you hear the court? Yes, sir. All right. Very good. to uh, make the appointment of the Public Defender's Office to represent Mr. Bruns. Well, Mr. Bruns is uh, charged with the offenses of rape uh, uh, class Y felony is charged as an habitual offender. On those charges, how does Mr. Bruns uh, plead? Enter a plea of not guilty. Waive reading of the information, Your Honor. The plea of not guilty is noted, uh, and and uh, public defender's office is appointed. At this point, the court. Uh, the court is setting this matter down for reappearance uh, for 
uh, a week from today, March 17th, in front of Judge Putman. The case is assigned to the, dis the Division Three docket. Any other matters to come before the court at this time? Not today, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Bonds, you may be excused. 2017-61, State of Arkansas versus uh, Billy Evans. Good morning, Mr. Evans. Can you hear the court? Can you hear the court? Yes, I can. All right. Very well. Have you made application to the public defender's office? No, sir. Have you employed an attorney? No, sir. Okay. You, uh, I think you were uh, arrested and charged uh, by, by information earlier this week. Uh, I think that's when when it happened uh, that you were the charges were uh, served on you, yes. and I believe the arrest date. Judge, the arrest date appears to be February 28th, and he was actually served the warrant in this case on March 3rd. All right. Uh, you're charged with terroristic threatening in the first degree, which is a Class D felony, first degree assault on a family or household member, a Class A misdemeanor, and violation of an order of protection, uh, a separate Class A misdemeanor. On those uh, charges, uh, how does the defendant, how do you now plead? Not guilty. I'm noting your plea of not guilty. What is your intention with regard to representation of counsel? Well, I don't really know that now at this moment. You don't know? No, I don't. Um, I really want to get John Nichols. Uh, I'm kind of financially embarrassed at the moment. Right. Well, uh, I, I will give you some time to, you know, you have some time to uh, contact Mr. Nichols and make your, make your arrangements if you can. Uh, you need to just understand that you have an absolute right to be represented by an attorney. As long as you're uh, attempting to hire counsel, the court doesn't get involved because that's a matter of private contract between you and the attorney you're trying to hire. At some point, if you determine that you are financially unable to arrange for counsel, you're still entitled to be represented. And what that means is you're entitled to make application to the public defender's office and seek uh, to have uh, appointed, to obtain pointed counsel. For that, you'll need to fill out an application available there at the, at the jail uh, in order to secure uh, appointed counsel. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. All right. Your case is assigned to the Division Three uh, docket of Judge Putman. Uh, I'm putting you down for you to reappear uh, in front of Judge Putman a week from today. Uh, in the in the meantime, you need to make uh, uh, use. I know there's certain limited resources in terms of making phone calls, but I will uh, if if you need if you need assistance in in making phone calls. Uh, getting phone calls for any reason, uh, let let the court know, and those arrangements can be made so you can contact uh, your prospective attorney and, and make what arrangements you can. Uh, uh, at this time, uh, do you have any other questions? No, no. All right, you may be excused. Sam Alexander Pharmacy has expanded and is now offering many additional products and services. Their new pharmaceutical compounding area allows them to create products to fit the unique needs of a customer. They also have added Spinco Orthotic Shoes and Sandals, Dr. Comfort Diabetic Shoes, 
baby gifts by Aiden and Anias, and toys by Melissa and Doug. Stop in today and let them help you with any of your specialty pharmaceutical needs. Sam Alexander Pharmacy, your local Health Mart Pharmacy in Harrison. I'm Randall. I work at the on-site lab at Dental Creations on the Square at Harrison. Working with Dr. Wanda is great. She's taught me a lot and showed me a lot, and she gives us the freedom to get one-on-one -on -one with the patient. If there's a problem, we can actually come out of the back and do what's best for the patient. Having this on-site lab here with the doctors, that's really nice. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison, next to the Big Red Boot. Two thousand sixteen one twenty State of Arkansas versus Jesse uh, Ballard. Mr. Ballard, uh, Mr. Gibson, you're representing Mr. Ballard. Correct, Your Honor. Uh, um, at this point, we're still in negotiations. I would ask that after speaking with the victim yesterday in the case, I would ask for a continuance of the trial setting for next week in hopes of uh, coming up with a negotiated plea for this matter. Okay. Speedy trial time to be told on the defense, obviously. All right. Court's going to grant uh, a, a continuance on the on the basis of the defense request. Trial date will be continued from its currently set uh, to start the week for March 13th. Be continued uh, uh, to uh, May the week of May 8th as an excluded period. Now. Um, Judge, if you would have Mr. Ballard reappear on April 21st, uh, Mr. Gibson and I in the last 48 hours have had a number of discussions about how to best resolve Mr. Ballard's case. All right. I'm putting him down for a, a reappearance uh, then on April 21st. Hopefully for a resolution of the case. If not, then it'll be we'll be looking at that May eighth trial date. Thank you, Your Honor. You may be excused, sir. 2016-255, State of Arkansas versus uh, Dylan Jones. Do you know if? David was able to do that other testing on Mr. Jones. Do we have a result? Okay. Judge, we did some additional testing on um, Mr. Jones. I don't have the results yet. Uh, perhaps if we bring him over this afternoon, we'll have some results. From my understanding, this is Mr. Hancock's case. Uh, it is. I believe he was supposed to be screened. We were a little late on doing that. Can we just set this on Putman's docket for next week? Well, he has actually been screened once, and based on some test results, we had him re-screened. Judge, let, let's do this. If we get, uh, if um, Mr. Russell indicates that he is uh, able to compile the results and we have them um, this morning, we will look at them and maybe have Mr. Jones brought over this afternoon if we can potentially dispose of the case. Okay. Thank you. Court will call now 2016-222, State of Arkansas versus Port Arthur Keogh. We have this case. We have this case on the trial docket for the for next week. Uh, 
with the trial period starting March 13th. This is the plea deadline point at this point. What, what's the status of this case in terms of trial next week? If Mr. Keogh could be carried to court, we might have a disposition. All right. I'm going to put him on the list to be brought over uh, after, after, uh, after the noon hour. Thank you, Your Honor. 2017-49, State of Arkansas versus Matthew Bolin. Judge, uh, that case has been transferred to this division. Right. And um, I briefly talked to the um, attorney involved uh, in that case. Mr. Bolin appears today merely to get on the court scheduling order. And judge, in this particular case, given the nature of the charges, etc., cetera, um, and the number of capital murder cases currently pending on this court's docket, I would ask that this case be set for the trial period beginning the Tuesday after Labor Day, which I think is September 6th. We have we we have trials starting Tuesday, September fifth. Okay, 5th. at this time. All right. Well, then what the court will do is the court's going to. Uh, Mr. Bunch, are you standing in for Mr. Coleman or, or on this? Yes, sir. I will. All right. Um, First of all, Mr. Boland, can you hear the court? Yes, I can. Uh, the, the gentleman here uh, closest to you, closest to the camera, is, is Mr. Tim Bunch. He's with the Public Defender's Office. Have you been contacted and in, in touch with Mr. Coleman? Yes, I have. All right. Good. The, uh, the court's going to set this matter. I think Judge Putman may have already put it on a scheduling order. But your case has been transferred from Judge Putman's docket to the to the Division Four docket of this court. I'm going to I'm going to reset you for uh, with a scheduling order. It'll set the matter for trial the week of uh, September 5th. That's a Tuesday because uh, September 4th is the is the uh, is the holiday. So we're setting this matter for trial that week. Uh, court is also setting the matter down for a pretrial hearing, which will be scheduled around August 4th of 2017. And um, depending on the number of motions to be heard, we may have to move that to a special setting. But right now, we'll put it down for the August 4th setting. And then I'm going to put uh, Mr. Bolin on this court's trial docket. Uh, I mean, appearance docket to reappear on June 2nd uh, to determine status of the case. So those, the, all, there'll be written scheduling order issued with all those dates on it. At this time, Mr. Boland, do you have any additional questions? No, sir. All right. You may be excused. Your, Your Honor, for the record, um, before you leave, I did briefly meet with Mr. Coleman, that was before I knew the case was going to be handed off to me, um, to a large extent the discovery in this case has been um, completed, but as these cases go, there will be additional discovery. But Mr. Um, Mr. Coleman uh, has a significant amount of discovery at this point. All right, very well. You may be excused, sir. 2016-269, State of Arkansas versus Shea Butler.
Mr. Butler's case has also been uh, reassigned uh, to the uh, to the Division Four docket, uh, and I believe we're here today to get this matter uh, down for for scheduling. Judge, in this case, Mr. Butler is represented by um, who's he rep uh, Terry, Terry Terry Chambers and. Um, there's a, who is it? Stokes. Stokes, Ms. Stokes. I did not have Ms. Stokes' email. Um, Terry Chambers is out of the country, although I did send her an email. Um, and she hasn't, um, responded, and I'm not sure where she is or ha have the ability to respond because we need to get this case on the court's sentencing order scheduling, I, order, scheduling order I have a capital murder trial in Marion County in July this county in August based on the previous defendant one in September we do not have a trial period in December and so I had indicated to Ms. Chambers if she and Ms. Stokes would look at their calendar and let the court know, or me know, whether they would prefer to have this trial in October or November. I, well, I, I, based on the arrest date, I, I think we ought to be shooting to have this case in September. And I mean, I'm going to set this one down right with the previous one for, for trial in September, uh, and and if one of them has to be bumped, the Bolin case is the later filed, the later arrested case. So uh, it had we have more time on speedy trial on on Bolin than we do on uh, on this case. So this 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 is the one that needs to go ahead of Bolin, unless there's some agreement from the defense to to take the time. Well, and since um, she's been out of the country and hasn't had an opportunity to respond, I, I can't answer that question. Okay. I'm, I'm setting this case right down again for trial the week of, uh, of September 5th. And that's a Tuesday. And uh, I'll set it for pretrial on August 4th. And again, if, if there are a lot of motions to be heard, then, that, then we may have to find a special date to hear those motions. But right now they're set for uh, August 4th, and then we have uh, June 2nd as a reappearance date. Your Honor, I will be meeting um, with Ms. Chambers on March 29th. Um, she and I have other uh, cases, I including another um, capital murder case in which we have a special setting on June 1st. And I will sit down with her and go over all the possible uh, schedules. And we may want to, if we are going to have a special uh, date on this, we might consider June 1st, which is um, the day we have set aside for. Uh, Mr. Dooley's case. Okay. But by the 29th, we, we will have a good schedule in place. Yeah. With, with these two cases added to, to my docket, we need, we need to be looking out and, and prioritizing between these, uh, these various capital murder cases. So let's, let's get let's everybody start working on that. Um, Mr. Butler, do you have any questions? No, sir. All right. You may be excused. Even the best of us make mistakes, so when trouble finds you, trust Campbell Bonding Company to help you through what can be a confusing and sometimes frightening experience. Jim, Robert, and Cole Campbell work as a family to offer your family understanding and compassion during a very difficult time. Campbell Bonding Company can help get your family back together quickly and confidentially. And in every step of the process, they're there for you. In times of trouble, let their family help your family. Campbell Bonding Company, 870-741-1138. I'm Randall. I work at the on-site lab. 
at Dental Creations on the Square at Harrison. Working with Dr. Wanda is great. She's taught me a lot and showed me a lot, and she gives us the freedom to get one-on-one -on -one with the patient. If there's a problem, we can actually come out of the back and do what's best for the patient. Having this on-site lab here with the doctors, that's really nice. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison, next to the Big Red Boot. Two thousand seventeen dash fifty six, State of Arkansas versus Allen Ray Giles. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Uh, Giles. Uh, appeared in front of Judge Putman on March 3rd uh, and was put down for arraignment here today on uh, by Judge Putman. Mr. Giles, have you made any arrangements to be represented by an attorney? I put it in for a friend. I have no idea. One's been Okay, but you filled out the form? Yes, I did. Ms. Russo, did, did we receive an application from Mr. Giles? Sir, I'm sorry. He is in my office. Oh, okay. Mr. Gibson. Mr. Gibson's here representing you. He's the appointed public defender, if I may uh, Mr. Giles. <coughs> Based on the application, the court is going to make the appointment of Mr. Gibson, the Public Defender's Office, to represent Mr. Giles. All right. So this is for arraignment. The charges are failure to register as an offender, uh, Class C felony. On those charges, how does Mr. Giles plead? Judge are not guilty in any way or form of any information. The matter is set on this court's docket. Um, Um, this case is obviously in the D Division Four docket. Uh, I see in the file that the individual was arrested up in Hutchison, Kansas, back in 2014 originally. Is that that's the status of this case? Judge, it's my understanding he told Judge Putman he'd been incarcerated the last four years, <laughs> at least somewhere, and um, he has made parole. 
Excuse me. Yes, sir. I was not in Hutchinson, Kansas in 2010. That was 2012. I have been incarcerated since 2012. Okay. July of 2012, I have been incarcerated. There is no way that Boone County can charge me the failure to register in 2014 because I was incarcerated. I did not live in Boone County. All right. I wish that Mr. Gibson would come visit me at his convenience. Mr. Mr. I'm, I'm sure he will, Mr. Giles. Yeah, we will. We've looked at it, Mr. Giles. And we, if, uh, and I okay, think the state, you, the state has reviewed it too and, and sees there potentially some issues in this. So. Uh, all right. All right. Court's going to uh, court's going to set this matter uh, down for uh, for on a on a trial schedule, setting it for trial uh, the week of uh, September fifth, uh, two thousand seventeen. Pre-trial on August fourth of two thousand seventeen, and. Uh, a reappearance on June second of two thousand seventeen. If the matter can be, if an agreement can be uh, reached on the uh, on the time frames and and the disposition, this matter can be brought before the court sooner than that than the, the June second date. That's the next date I'm ordering reappearance. That'll be the order of the court. You may be excused, sir. Excuse me, Judge. I have one question. Yes, sir. Okay. I was to pull out to the halfway house. I was not to be held in jail. Okay? Now, why is there any reason that you cannot order me to go ahead and go to the halfway house? Because there's this outstanding warrant that you were arrested on. That's why you're in jail. Okay. So, in other words, I, I, I can still bond out, right? Well, after we determine what the situation is, yes. What do you mean, after the situation? After we determine what the situation is in terms of the dates and, and, the, uh, uh, and the charges in this case. Okay. I, 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 I still wish for Mr. Gibson at his convenience to come see me. He has, he has okay. said he will. So, okay, thank you. You bet. Right. You may be excused. Judge, I show him having a $15,000 bond. Even the best of us make mistakes, so when trouble finds you, trust Campbell Bonding Company to help you through what can be a confusing and sometimes frightening experience. Jim, Robert, and Cole Campbell work as a family to offer your family understanding and compassion during a very difficult time. Campbell Bonding Company can help get your family back together quickly and confidentially. And in every step of the process, they're there for you. In times of trouble, let their family help your family. Campbell Bonding Company, 870-741-1138. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of a community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. Healthmart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There is one right here. Healthmart pharmacists have a crucial commitment to their community because just like you, they support their community. Healthmart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Harrison has a Healthmart now. Sam Alexander Pharmacy, on the square in downtown Harrison. Healthmart, caring for you and about you. Two thousand sixteen dash two oh four State of Arkansas versus uh, Tara Sayers. Judge, she's made that application to the public defender's office if I may approach. Very good.
All right. The court is making the appointment of the public defender's office. file reflects that on September 2nd she did not appear an alias warrant was issued on January 3rd there's it was noted that, that she she had not been apprehended on February 10th the warrant was still outstanding and she was served on February 22nd uh, of 2017 as reflected in the file um, The court has made the appointment of the public defender's office. She is already on a scheduling order uh, that has her for pretrial on March 24th uh, and for trial during the week of May 8th. Any other questions on this matter? Judge, I'm going to give Mr. Gibson 49 pages of discovery and a CD of photos. Ms. Sayre, you, you ha obviously have a question. Yes, John. Um, I have to die to take care of matters since um, October. Um, also, I have to take care of matters since October. I have to take care of matters since October. Officer Saylor informed me that I did not have a warrant and continued in telling me this as I, as I tried to just disturb it all the way up until the month of February. Uh, if any way possible, I would really like to get this match resolved today so I can get back to my job side. I've been so over the top, that's been spent time. I really like to call out the day and I lose everything I've worked for. But I have to have even my, even my uh, probation officer, uh, Charlene Sell, knows that uh, it's a matter I've been trying to take care of. Is there any way we can get this resolved today? Well, I mean, Mr. Gibson, you're just. <coughs> getting started on the case uh, it's, I mean I there's always potential to settle a case but I, don't, I wouldn't tell you just to say hey I want to be done today because we don't know what the outcome is yet I, I understand you want to get out but if we can let me work the case a little bit and see if we can come up with something all right, all right. that'll be the order of the court you may be excused at this time uh, what, what, what the uh, I, mean, I, I don't think so since since the alias warrant was served on February 22nd it's no bond and that's and that's because you did not appear for all that time so that I did not understand that I had a court date then once I realized that I might uh, I mean like I said I, I called Officer Taylor and my probation officer several times and Officer Taylor finally told me that he didn't have a warrant and that's why I didn't have a warrant and when I was arrested and he arrested me, he told me, he said, well, I wasn't going to tell you that work was going to be with that state. I was handling business with my father, who had passed away. And, but this doesn't matter. I have been trying well, very hard to take care of. At this point, you do not have a bond set. Judge, it, it would have been better if she had checked with her bond company. All right. I was never bonded out before. What do you mean you were never bonded out? She was alarmed. I was Oh. I was released in that one. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. when, you, when you are released, it would be a good idea if you would make note of the fact that this court entered uh, a scheduling order way back in September uh, that set, set dates for you to to reappear uh, and uh, that's that's the reason that you're now being held with no bond is because you didn't appear on any of those those dates now, I don't know I don't know what uh, what your communication with uh, uh, either Miss Bell or uh, Mr. Sailors was but th that the record uh, shows that you did not appear uh, starting back in back in September uh, and so it was it, it took five months for us to secure your reappearance in court 
which is why at the present time you're being held with no bond. So, all right. I, I will put it, I mean, this matter's on for, for March 24th. Uh, we'll, come, we'll come back in two weeks. Uh, that's the pretrial date. But if there if there's something can be resolved, certainly that that should give you some time, Mr. Uh, Gibson, to work on. Judge, I'll her. review the file and see if we can't yeah. come to a resolution. All right. You may be excused. <coughs> two thousand sixteen two thirty eight, State of Arkansas versus Shad Stewart. Your Honor, we had screened Mr. Stewart and did not approve him for drug court, so if we could keep him on the scheduling order that we have. The current scheduling order has him down for trial during the week of May 8th with a uh, pretrial uh, hearing set for March 24th. All right. Are there any questions? No defense, Your Honor. All right. You may be excused at this time. <laughs> Moving into uh, cases on the revocation docket, the first is 2012. Boone County case 2012-269, State of Arkansas versus Jennifer Stockman. Court reflects this as a first appearance for, for arraignment on, on the allegations contained in a petition to revoke. That petition to revoke was filed uh, February 17th of 2017. Uh, it's a case assigned to Judge Putman's docket. Uh, apparently, she was arraigned, arrested on February 27th. Um, have you made any arrangements to be represented by an attorney, Ms. Stockman? Not on the medication department, but I did talk to the I'm sorry, when you, on the original charges you had a public defender, is that what you were saying? I filed for the first. Judge, I believe she has another case pending and she has a public oh. defender's office. She just hasn't filled out the paperwork for this case. You'll, you'll need, for each case where the public defender's office is to be appointed, you'll need to make a separate application. So you'll need to make that application. Uh, at this time, the allegations against you are contained in the written uh, petition to revoke your suspended sentence. The court would advise you those allegations are that uh, you violated uh, condition one, which is the condition uh, that says you are not to violate the law in any ma manner, and it says that uh, allegedly, I guess this is the case that Mr. Carter was referring to, that you have pending on the docket 
for possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, with those new charges, it's alleged that you violated the condition one. There's also an allegation of violation of condition three, which is uh, the condition that says you're not to be in possession a control of, of uh, controlled substances or paraphernalia. There's a third uh, condition, uh, it, the, uh, another violation of Condition 3 uh, based on a uh, violation of uh, having a positive test for amphetamine and marijuana back in September. And finally, there's an alleged violation for failing to, uh, to pay on your fines and costs and alleges that your last payment uh, dates back to 2015. So uh, those are the basis for the petition to revoke in this case on those allegations. How do you now plead? I'm not sure how I should plead, Your Honor. I haven't spoken with the attorney, but um, I do have, I don't know. Judge, I I'm going to enter a plea of not true on your behalf. I'm putting this matter, it's down on Judge Putman's, uh, for you to reappear before Judge Putman on March 17th uh, at, for him to schedule schedule you for hearing on his docket. At, at, at the, okay, you're breaking up. I'm not sure why. I, I'm not hearing you clearly. Had three small children VHS took for me on the day that they arrested me. Um, I need to go to DHS and start the program and also um, I have a home vehicle that I need to get out of impound. I don't have family, sir. Um, anyway, you can make a bond for me. I've been here almost two weeks. And regardless of what happens in my upcoming case, I will, I've never missed a court date ever. What says the state? Your Honor, the most serious charge uh, against her is a Class C felony. She's on probation for a Class D felony. Uh, I think that if the court would set her bond at $5,000, covering both the, the new case and um, the probation revocation, that would be reasonable. Any special conditions requested by the state? No use of drugs, alcohol, don't violate the law, and Get first the, thing Monday morning, meet with your probation officer. No problem, sir. All right. Court's going to set the bond at $5,000, cash or professional. It'll be conditioned upon no use of drugs or alcohol, uh, and uh, an immediate uh, first thing Monday morning. If you uh, first, first uh, work day after you bond out, uh, you make that bond, uh, the court expects you to get to the probation officer and get back uh, in terms with your probation officer and the terms and conditions of your uh, in compliance with the terms and conditions of your probation. That will be the conditions of the bond. You may be excused. Your next appearance in court is March 17th. In Court on TKLA Television is brought to you in part by Campbell Bonding Company. Even the best of us make mistakes, so when trouble finds you, trust Campbell Bonding Company to help you through what can be a confusing and sometimes frightening experience. Jim, Robert, and Cole Campbell work as a family to offer your family understanding and compassion during a very difficult time. Campbell Bonding Company can help get your family back together quickly and confidentially. And in every step of the process, they're there for you. In times of trouble, let their family help 